Rock Spring Church. Building community through loving Christ and loving others. loving others. Church, building community through loving Christ and loving others. Welcome to Rock Spring Church. We're thrilled that you're able to join us online today for worship. If you'd like to support our ministry by giving, simply text GIVE to 304-202-7046 or visit our website rockspring.net. At rockspring.net, you can also find out more about our church. You can watch our services live every Sunday at 10.30 a.m., Eastern Standard Time. You can watch on Facebook at Rock Spring Church or on YouTube at Rock Spring Church TV. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share our channel with your friends. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the service. It's about to start soon. Church, building community through loving Christ and loving others. Church, building community through loving Christ and loving others. I hope that you are out there joining us this morning in worship. What a beautiful day today is. Absolutely go out there afterwards and spend some time in the sunshine that God has given us this morning. Let's worship him today. Never 
we just want the presence of God closer to us ever than ever before, right now, as we are forced to be physically separated from each other. There's nothing else that's left but God in his presence. Because he can be right here with us, no matter where we are, no matter how many people are with us, whether with or with our families or not. We just want God's presence to pull closer to us and give us comfort and give us his love and reassures that he's got this. He has a plan for this. Your love has ravished my heart and taken me over, taken me to be with you 
You know, it's funny. God has a, an interesting way of bringing us down to our knees. We are just so stubborn and we are refusing to slow down and stop and be quiet and be still and rest and have peace, have silence. There's so much noise around us. No matter where we go, there is constant noise. And right now we have this opportunity to, we are forced to against our own wishes, against our own anxious selves that have to move around all the time. We are forced to sit still. We are forced to be quiet. We are forced to be with our families. And I imagine that spending some time at home, all these thoughts are flooding our heads and that we normally try to push away, we normally try to fill with other things. Our God is a God of peace. He gives us a peace beyond all understanding. So while our thoughts might be raging war because we're just not used to sitting and listening to them anymore, but now we're forced to, God will calm them down and he will shift them into his will, into what he intends for this time to be, this time with our families, this time with ourselves, this time with him. There's no better time than to reflect on his love and on his peace than right now.
said you are God Oh Be still My Heart I know That you Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? Luke 12, 25, 26. If we will allow, God wants to turn our worry, anxiety, and stress inside out. Good morning, Rock Spring Church. Hey, Kids Rock, I know you're not here today because the halls are quiet, an unplugged room is silent, and uh, high school kids aren't here. Man, this is different. Do you know someone who worries? I know that this week I've been worried. I've been worried about coming in here and having less people in here than I did when I first started the church. How about you? What are you worried about? But here's some good news. There's some things that you don't have to worry about. You get to sit at home and have church in your pajamas. You get to sing, and nobody can hear you except your family. I don't know. Maybe that's worse. But what do you worry about? This week, as I was preparing for this message, Bentley reminded me to only worry about the things that really matter. Now, for those of you that don't know who Bentley is, He's my little fur boy right here, and he was really worried Saturday morning because I had the last piece of bacon in my hand. Most of us, for most of us, there's so much more to worry about. Bentley only worries about food and loneliness. For you... There's probably significant more for you to worry about. Kids are home from school, work routines, paychecks are uncertain. Even common coughs and sneezes are now a reason for us to worry, not to mention the store shelves being empty. Regardless of the focus of our worry, I'd like to draw your attention this morning to a question that Jesus asked about worry. Luke 12, 25 and 26 says this, who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Now, as I thought about that verse, oddly enough, it stuck out to me that Jesus said that adding an hour to my life was a little thing. I'd love to be able to know that I could add an hour to my life when it counts. How about you? And I consider that a big thing, but Jesus said, really, in his scheme of things, adding an hour to our life to him is something small. But even more than that, I believe Jesus is asking us to consider the value of worry. I think Jesus, in this verse, is really asking us this question right here. What is worry worth? This is a different question than what do you worry about? I don't know about you, but I think we worry on a value basis. We worry about what we value the most. The more we value it, the more time we spend worrying about it, thinking about it, obsessing about it, trying to change things about it when the reality of it is how much of it can we really do. The more we value something, the more we tend to worry about it. But here's what I believe Jesus wants us to focus on this morning. Does worry add anything good to our life? At the end of the day, with all the worry, all the anxiety, all the stress, all the things that we value and hold so dear that we try to change when we can't really change anything. 
has it really added anything to our life? See, here's what I want to do in the first installment of this series called Inside Out, because that's what it is. We have to change things from the inside before things outside will really be any different. Jesus wants us to focus on what we can do instead of wasting our time and energy on what we can't do. Jesus said this in Matthew 6, 34. He said, when it comes to worry, refuse to worry. Now, let me slam on the brakes there for a second, because if you're anything like me, when you hear Jesus say these words, you believe he's asking you to do the impossible. As I listened to the newscast this week and talked to friends and had people call the church looking for help and counseling, this concept of refusing to worry about tomorrow just really caused me to worry more. How about you? But Jesus says, refuse to worry about tomorrow, but deal with each challenge that comes your way one day at a time. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Wouldn't it be life-altering and life-changing if we really believed that if we just focused on today, that tomorrow really would take care of itself? Yeah, this is what I believe Jesus is saying to you today. I believe Jesus is saying he wants you to be present in today. He wants you to be present in today because, as Melissa said while she was leading worship, we spend so much time focusing our thoughts on other things. We're with our family, but we're not present with our family. We're with our children, but do they really feel like we're with them? We go to work, and our coworkers don't feel like we care about them. We spend so much time going through the day, but we're really not present in the day. God wants you to be fully present in each day. He wants you to be present today in your homes. No, we are not worshiping together in this building, but we're worshiping together. I praise God for the opportunity to be able to do that for our tech people that are in here making this happen. Let's focus on today, what you can actually do today about a problem or even a dream. Wouldn't it be refreshing if we just took this moment, this day, to begin to seriously focus on what we can do about a given situation, a given problem today, or a dream that God has given us? What can we do today? to maximize, to prepare for that dream. I've known people so worried about losing their home after a job loss that they couldn't bring themselves to go look for a job. Others have worried so much about a possible diagnosis they put off receiving care until the problem is so much worse. I've even been around people who have worried themselves literally sick. Jesus would want us to embrace today and know that worry can't prevent tomorrow's troubles. It only hinders dealing with today. I know that I'm trying to make a change in my life where I actually do live for today, that I'm present with my family, I'm present with my grandkids, I'm present with my church, and I'm working on the things that we can do today. Because the reality of it is, when I answer that question that Jesus asked in that first verse, worry does me no good. Worry only inhibits me from being able to take care of the things that I could, should, and be able to take care of today. He wants us to change from the inside out. It's possible when we aren't thoughtful about today, we can actually be creating tomorrow's worries. I saw on the news this week that there's a whole group of spring breakers down in Miami just crowding the beaches. They're so focused on having a good time today that they're risking tomorrow's health. I know people that are seeking relief of loneliness today, and they're seeking it so desperately that they're willing to go into any relationship that's out there, not understanding that it could potentially leave them in the arms of a bad relationship. I know that I've wanted stuff and run out and made decisions without thinking about it today until the bills came, 30, 60, or 
six months or six years from now. Kids. Kids are doing homeschool. Parents are loving it, aren't they? I've had parents writing me saying that they're ready to expel their kids from school. But here's what the kids need to know, parents. Putting off schoolwork today will only cause them worry because school will resume again. God wants us to live without worry. But living without worry begins being present in today. I begin today's message with you guys today by saying that worry has value, at least to some of us. But is it a real value? Is it, is it a value that brings anything to our life? Some of us need to stop and ask ourselves, is there really any value in worry? And here's something else I believe. We can also worry because we undervalue something. 1 Peter 5, 7 says this, Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Some people that I care an awful lot about, two different people yesterday contacted me, and one was telling me how they were breaking out in hives. And to which I began to talk to them about how God wants them to handle worry. And they shared with me that they've been internalizing this worry. And when they internalized this worry, it just found other ways to come out. Someone else contacted me on Facebook and said, well, let's not worry because God gives and God takes away. Well, that's a true statement. But living in fear of God taking away something, I don't believe is trusting God. A God that I know will never take anything away from us that isn't actually good for us in the process. Give all your worries to God, for he cares about you. See, here's the problem. When you doubt your value with God, it will lead you to worry. You've heard it a thousand times. God loves you. But that's pretty hard to, sometimes to believe when trouble invades our life. When we experience something as a country, as a nation we've never experienced before, it can be very difficult to believe he really loves us. It can cause us to doubt our value with him. It can leave us feeling like we can't trust him, but yet we can't get away from what the Word of God really says because he says, give us all of your worries. Give me, Jesus says, all of your worries, for I care about you. See, here's the thing. When you know your value with God, you'll be able to relax. Kids, those of you that are watching, Bentley was all worried Saturday. He thought that that last baked piece of bacon in my hand was not going to be part of his breakfast. And he was worried. But here's the problem. He needed to remember his value to me. Because see, when Bentley remembers his value to me, he's able to relax. He only has two worries, really, food and loneliness. We have so much else to worry about, but our Heavenly Father says the same thing that I would say to my fur boy. I care about you. I value you. I love you. There's no need for you to worry. But here's the thing. When when we understand our value with God, we're able to be present in today, in this moment. That verse that I just read you in the King James Version goes like this, cast all your cares upon him. Wouldn't it be great if every day 
with the onslaught of worries that we're experiencing now, we were able to just take them and immediately cast them on Jesus, just transfer them from us right to him, because I believe that's what God wants us to be able to do. When you really know he cares for you, you will be free to live in today. You'll be free to slow down, as Melissa said, to think about your life, to think about your challenges and your dreams. You'll begin to make wise decisions today, decisions that will work with God in eliminating worry, work with God in creating your dreams in him. When you know that he cares about you, you'll be free to live for today, for your true purpose. One of the passions of my heart is talking to people that have been in church, had a bad experience, and given up on God. They don't know how much God loves them. They believe that he's a cosmic killjoy or a harsh taskmaster. They are not able to relax. They don't understand their value with him, but when you understand how much he loves you, that he sent his one and only son to die on the cross for you. When you know that's how much value he places on you, that's when you're able to begin to turn the corner and transition to living simply for today and casting your cares on him. To live out your full and true purpose, which is very simple. Your purpose in life really isn't to, isn't to solve your problems, it's to love him and to love others. Because God says this, when we get to a point where we know our value in him and are able to return the love that he gives us, and then we in turn show him love by learning to love others, he tells us that those are the only things he requires from us. That if we can just learn to be free to love him and learn how to love others, that all of the law, all of the requirements, everything we've ever been taught that we need to do for God, he says, is resolved. To me, that's freedom. To me, that's really living. See, when I can begin to live for today and live out my purpose, knowing that my purpose is to find ways to love my Heavenly Father and to find ways to love my church, and to love my community. And when I know that that fulfills his purpose for me, that opens up the door for him to take all my worries and find solutions for them. I believe this is why Jesus tells us, you and I, we don't need to worry. Hey, I get it. We're going to have problems. Jesus never promises us a problem-free or a trouble-free life. But what if the troubles and the concerns and the difficulties and the challenges that you experience today, what if you could live in complete confidence that when you love God and you love others, you have God on your side? He may not fix the challenge. He may not solve the problem the way that you want him to. But he always promises he'll take care of it ultimately for what's best for us. See, I've seen God do this time and time again for me. I've seen him do it time and time again for those I love and care about. I've seen him do it over and over again for people here in this church and in our community. When we focus on loving him and loving others and fulfilling our ultimate purpose, he's always there fighting for us, taking care of us, providing for us. See, whatever challenges you're experiencing today, while they're new to you, they're not new to God. The Bible tells us there's nothing new under the sun, including our problems, including our challenges. When we live for today, it means we can count on him to take care of everything that we're not able to do. So here's what I've come to understand about God and what I would love for you to experience with him. 
A God that I know can take and turn your worry into wonder. See, I, I believe God wants you to know him fully as God, the creator of the world, and the one who's able to do anything and everything, the one who loves you beyond measure. He wants to take your worries and turn them into wonder. This is the amazing thing about the Bible, and while I encourage people to read it, because it's full of stories of life change, it's full of stories of people having their worries turned into wonder. See, I read stories like the disciples who worried about how to feed the 5,000. They run to Jesus. No better place to run to. And the first words out of their mouth was, send them home, Jesus, send them home. Send them away from you because if we don't send them away from you, they're going to starve. There's not enough here to feed them. Sometimes Jesus can seem to add to our problems instead of making our problems better on the front end because he did it in this situation. He said to them, you give them something to eat. Now, that seems like an unusual statement from Jesus when they have already assessed the problem. And maybe you've done the same thing today. Maybe you have already made an assessment with your problem and you've determined there's no way you're going to get around this thing. That's the conclusion the disciples had come to. But Jesus has something greater planned for them. So they went back and looked again, and they found a boy who had five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring your problem to me. Bring your problem to me. So they brought what they had, and Jesus blessed it. Isn't that really what we want today? For Jesus to take what we have, no matter how much or little it is, no matter what our assessment is on how it can or can't solve our problem. Isn't what we want him to do today to take it and bless it? Because he did it that day, he took it and blessed it and they fed 5,000 people. But see, the wonder doesn't end there. Jesus told them to go and collect what was left over and they had more left over than what they started with. Now here's the thing, what if they hadn't gone back? I love this story of the four friends of an invalid. And they want to help him. But they look around and they see these crowds and there's no way that they can get in to see Jesus. And they're believing that if they can just take their worry to Jesus, he'll fix it. And see, they could have stopped there. They could have looked at the crowds. They could have looked at the shut door. And they could have said, there's no way around but they didn't. They created a band of roof diggers and they cut a hole in the roof of this person's house. Can you imagine turning that into your insurance company? Somebody wanted to see Jesus so bad they cut a, rule, a, roof, a hole in the roof of my house. And they lowered their friend into the presence of Jesus. And Jesus healed their friend. Wouldn't having friends like that mean everything to you? See, they loved Jesus and they loved their friend. We could go on. We could talk about the centurion who loved his sick friend, who went and pressed Jesus to come to his house. Blind Bartimaeus, not listening to the crowds and crying out to Jesus. See, they took their worries to the one place they knew that their worries could be turned to wonder. The woman with the issue of blood. She could have continued to worry, couldn't she? She could have looked at her circumstances. She had, as the story goes, exhausted all possible resources that she had. And she could have lived in her worry. But she didn't. She went into the crowd. 
she made a way by pressing through. She knew that if she just could touch the robe of Jesus, that her worry would be turned into wonder. So here's what I want to ask you today as we close. Regardless of what your past experience has been with God, with what people have told you about Jesus, the way some Christ followers have treated you, for goodness sake, the way we see some Christ followers post things on Facebook in this current crisis. There's all kinds of reasons to continue to worry, isn't there? But there's only one for trading in your worry. And that's to believe that you have value enough with God for Him to take what you're worried about and turn it into something miraculous that you will never, ever forget. Because at the end of the day, at the end of this service, at the end of this current crisis, That's really what it's all about with God. Knowing that you have value in Him. And knowing that He wants to do some wondrous things in your life. If you're just willing to live out your purpose in loving Him and loving others. And casting your worries on Him. So here's what I'm going to do in the last four or five minutes that I have. I'm going to invite you to pray with me. In the privacy of your home or wherever you are right now, maybe sitting in a car, watching on your phone, wherever it is, you really are in the presence of the one true and living God. And He really does want you to assess the value of worry in your life. And I'm going to ask you to think right now about what your greatest worry is. Maybe it's your business, business owner. Maybe it's your employees. Maybe it's being furloughed. Maybe it's having gone to Walmart and you just don't know how you're gonna feed the family over the next day because there just wasn't anything left. Whatever that is, I wanna invite you to give it to Jesus right now. And when I'm done praying, I want you to know that there are people here that love God enough to love you and stand with you. I'm gonna invite you that if you've made a decision to give Jesus another chance or maybe give Jesus a chance for the first time, if you've decided maybe you'll give church a second, third, or hundredth chance, I wanna stand with you. So when we're done praying, I wanna invite you to Go to our website and click the contact button or the prayer button. I want you to have enough faith in God to reach out and be willing to ask to have people stand with you. Take that chance. Jesus is waiting for you too. And I believe with all my heart, he's ready, willing, and able to take your worry and turn it into wonder. The question is, are you willing to give him that chance? Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. This has been a weird day for a lot of us. Maybe we've worshiped you from at home for the first time, or maybe we've led worship with no one in the room for the first time. I know I was more worried about coming in and speaking in an empty room today than having a room full of people. There's a never-ending list of things we can worry about. But regardless of what we're worried about, you, God, have given us a promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, that when we are real and honest with you and ourselves, 
and we come to the conclusion that worry really brings no value to our life. It sets us free to begin to give them to you and to trust you. So right now, Heavenly Father, here's my prayer for all of those that are lifting up their thoughts and their hearts and their minds toward you. And I pray this already knowing that you are a God who is willing to do this. That as they give their worries to you, that you will begin to lead them on a path of discovering new and wondrous ways of living. Holy Spirit, give them the power and the confidence to wait on you. That whether your answer to their prayer is immediate or whether it comes over time, that the moment they begin to ask and give you the worry is the moment that you, God, begin to work on their behalf. And that there is no one and nothing that can stand in your way of that transformation. Because God, ultimately, at the end of the day, what you want to do is reveal to us and to the rest of this world your glory, who you really are your power, your might, your willingness, and most important, how desperately great your love is for us. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for all you have done in my life and the lives of so many others. And God, I, I, I just praise you right now in advance for what I know that you're going to do in the lives of those who are giving you yet another chance. We give this day to you and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for being with us today. I hope you were comfortable. I hope you enjoyed our worship. I hope you enjoyed the word. Most of all, I hope you'll reach out and give Jesus a chance. We'll see you next week. God bless.